We'll stroke your ego till you make that face I like. Mm. Follow Tosh and Truth Podcast. DC Radio Live dot com. Number one. Number one. And we know you got one hand up, one finger up, you got three fingers down. And you know what that's for? It's for. For all the deaths that we had in the last last couple of months. months. Pointing down in the ground, six feet. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to keep it real, you know. I, I try to keep a nice. This is why. This is why he can never be serious or nothing. It's very serious. This is no. We just, we just, we just lost um, some some heavy hitters. No, we right? did. Uh, we lost Ezel, AJ Johnson. All right, Smokey from uh, Friday. Exactly. Um, that's us. Not Smokey. That wasn't Smokey. Smokey is. Chris Tucker. Smokey was Chris Tucker. No, Ezel is... Uh, no, he was the smoker. He was the smoker. Okay, that's what it was. Okay. I knew it was smoke something. That's, this is what I'm saying. Out, that movie been out so long. You know, try to keep keep a grip. Everybody on that show is dead except Chris Tucker and... Um, Ice T. And Ice Cube. Cube. The whole rest of everybody. Felicia no, not- And Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just keeping it honest. Listen, I we can he can never be serious here. This is the problem. This Spence. is why this is this Spence. is the problem. This is why it's very we, disrespectful. We lost uh, Tiny Lister. We lost Reds, the comedian boy, the dad. Um, who else died from there? Uh, Pops. No, what's his name is still alive, isn't he? Bernie Mac. No, but the other one is still alive. The light skinned guy. Debo, Tiny Lister. He's dead. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he died. Oh, remember wow. he died? You remember he died? No. Cause they've been, everybody been dying so fast, we forget. We forget. But I don't forget. I don't want y'all to think that I'm laughing. I don't, I don't forget. I'm really not. It's him. Because these people touched our hearts. They they were, you know, they were uh, a part of our upbringing. Exactly. Of, of our, of, of, if you're black and you don't know about Friday, the series, the movies. You, you just didn't know you, about anything. Yeah, you, you suck. Okay. Um, who else did we lose? We lost um, the wire. The wire. Uh, my man, uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael K. Williams. And I'm gonna tell you a story about Michael Williams because I got stories about everybody. <clears throat> I'm hosting this show uh, in Harrisburg, which is where he's from in the area. Um, it was a music summit. Uh, big ups to my man, uh, one of my DJ friends. I'll get his name name right off when I get think about it. <clears throat> Um, but I had the chance to, he, he was one of the people on the, the show that I was hosting. Was hosting. <clears throat> so they said, Truth, you're going to interview this guy, Michael Williams from The Wire. Now, I don't even have a TV, yet alone cable, to watch The Wire. So I don't know who the hell Michael Williams Omar is. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, Omar, he's the greatest guy. He's from The Wire. I'm like, okay, whatever. <clears throat> I get on stage. This Negro comes out, dark skin. You know, I'm light skin, so I'm kind of... Got to be on my P's and Q's. So you like skin now? Child. You know? You know he likes skin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, he comes up, shake his hand. Now, there's some, I got to find, there's got to be some video of this because he's a celebrity. Yes, So exactly. somebody has this video. And if you have the video, you were at the National Hip Hop Summit in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I need that video. <clears throat> so I, I interview him. All I had, I had some, some pointers. HBO, The Wire, Black. That was all that was the notes, notes that I had. But we know that you can make, you know, that you can do your thing. Oh, man. I gave, this, I gave this guy the funkiest 10-minute interview. He was so impressed. Because I think I told him. I said, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it. I said, I have no idea. I can believe it. You'll do something like that. I told him. I, didn't, I said, I want, to, I, I want, as the truth, DJ, I got to be honest. I'm not going to lie and be like, oh, I'm your greatest fan. I don't know who the hell you are. Mm-hmm. So I gave him the interview because I'm a professional. That's what you're and, supposed um, to do. And maybe two years later, when I finally got a chance to get a TV and I watched The Wire, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's him. Yeah. I was like, wow. Major, major Good. team, major team. But we lost him. Yeah. We lost him to drugs. Okay. We lost him to, to an overdose in his uh, Brooklyn, New York apartment, I think it was. I mean, do you know, because of COVID and everything that's going on, you just don't know what people are coping with that these days, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just sad because it's a lot of people, you know, we just talk about even just gun violence 
in general of in Philadelphia and how we're just losing so many of our children just to gun violence. And, mm. you know, even though you try to look out for them or it's people that try to, you know, even people that was into shooting people and doing different things like that now they're coming out to advocate because it's just so it's much just, it's just it's you know just. what i mean like it's just like i mean you have women you have children you have every time you turn around and i mean like within the last two days it's been like what like eight kids that were under 15 mm -hmm. so it's just like every time you turn around it's just something new and the more that people try to talk it's like the more that these kids want to do i don't know if they understand life but what really shocked me mm -hmm. was it was a young guy and what happened was brats had to get locked down the right. school i mean well they didn't lock it down they closed it down because a few kids had gotten shot like five kids wow. one of the kids he sent his teacher a note I mean like was texting him and said I am so scared he said because all of my friends are gone like when is the day that I walk outside and I'm no longer here right. and all of that is heartbreaking especially when you have children now some people that don't have kids they may look at it like oh you know it's not that deep but when you have a child especially in that age bracket mm -hmm. where these young kids are dying so mm -hmm. fast and frequently and every time you blink your eye um I just was at Temple Hospital and they was bringing gunshot victims in and yeah, it's scary. just like it's like it's really scary because I mean again we we've, we've known of killings that was happening but a lot of times we've seen these things happen in LA and different mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. over the TV like oh wow they would show that on the TV now we've I, seen everything I was in the hospital um, when I, I broke my neck last year a lot of people don't know I did break my neck last year and I was at Einstein and I was in a trauma and they were there's six or seven doctors trying to figure out how to fix me up. And at the same time, uh, some young guy got shot at Broad and Olney, um, a few times and they brought him into the trauma unit and he's next to me and I hear them working on him. He's next to me and I hear them working on him and it was scary. I'm quite okay? sure it is. It was scary knowing Oh, this is the guy. He just got shot. It's on the news. People are watching this guy, and he's next to me. Okay, young guy. I don't know. It's just a the, the value of life has gone down. Do you think it has anything it has. to do with social media? It, um, it, I think it has a lot to do with with all this money that's been on the street in the last two well, years. Well, that yeah, but I mean before it con contrary to that it was happening before not it just was not in these large numbers like that so again they got this money then all they did think, was go out think and buy about, guns think about when when it really started getting bad in the last two years when people were shooting off fireworks in january and you were like where's all these fireworks coming from that's when the money started infiltrating the street when when people had too much money they were buying all these fireworks, and then that sort of led into the summertime. By the time July 4th got here, you didn't even care about these fireworks because you were just done. All right? The stimulus checks hit, the pandemic money. So you got crackheads I running around with $30,000 in their hand. And you got people on the street selling the crack and the drugs who want to kill the people now because they know they know you got money. They know uh, Smokey or Smoke was name. From uh, Friday? No, Smokey is... Smoke, no, sm not Smokey. Uh, Smoke, Ezel. 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 They knew Ezel had all this money. So they killed all the Ezels, including the real Ezel. But it's just sad. It's, it's sad. Just sad. It's it sad. is. It's the world that there's, we there's, live there's, in. There's, there's like, to, to see a child, eight years old, five, four, the little girl just got shot in the face and run over by a car exactly. at the same damn time, Tosh. Are you <laughs> exactly. Sure? What? It was terrible. What? And the crazy part is they had a video of her. And again, we know that these videos come out and they're not really trying to exploit the kids. But in the same token, it's just so sad to see. Oh, it. she got exploited. And Top Dog Law exploited it, too. I got some words for you, too, buddy. Oh, he, he was did. right in the hospital talking about, do you have anything you want to say? Because I guess he's trying to file a case or whatever. But he's zooming in on the girl's face. Oh, yeah, her face, her face was all tore well, up tore and everything. Up. Yes. Okay, I've been trying to get Top Dog Law to, to be on my team, do some work for him. But he want to work with Tiz215. So you know what? Both of them are banned. <laughs> Both of them are banned from this show. Don't ever talk about... Top dog law. Well, I don't. Or, you don't. I want to go. I was just saying as a reminder. I want to go as a reminder for me. If you ever hear me talking about top dog law, 
shut me off. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. But um, other than that, you know, it's just the world that we live in. So I do say because we are living in this world nowadays, be a little bit more patient to people, be a little bit more kind, a little bit more understanding and, because you never know what somebody going through. And I, I have this, the formula to sort of shut down, stop, slow down gun violence. This is my, my, this is what I, I feel the streets. Do I have to be prepared to no, about no, what you're about no, to say? No, no, do no. I have to get up and walk you away don't. and take a break? Um, what I propose, and I'm going to talk to the mayor about this, is if you shoot someone, mm -hmm. okay, you have to follow the trail of that victim, whether it's all the way to the hospital, in the ER, while they're getting pumped out, getting fixed, or you have to follow them all the way till that body goes in the ground. Then you get the chance to go in the court system and be, be either committed or found innocent. But once you shoot someone, God, now let's say they die, okay? We're not gonna take you to jail. No, 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 no. We're gonna take you to the morgue. Oh, yeah, to okay? follow them. You're gonna follow that body to the morgue. You're gonna watch the autopsy. No, you can't nod off. Wake up, Psh, wake up. Watch the autopsy. And you're gonna follow that body, even if it has to wait a few days because they didn't have any money to bury him. You're gonna wait in that freezer for a week, okay? Finally get the body out, take him to the funeral home. You're gonna follow that body to the funeral home. Okay. I just put it going home to my I, I regret lock me up. Nope. Nope. This is you this is what you did. Well, you know, I, I always and I, say I, I this. bet Tosh that if somebody had to go through that, the next person will be like, Oh, if I shoot you, I have to actually see all this process. I don't want to be a part of it. Because at the end process is you at the funeral. Guard you're gonna have some police protection, but we're gonna have you at the funeral. Okay? And if you yeah, make it if you that. make it past the family Somehow, some way. Then and only then will you be allowed to get into the court system and we can put some penalties on you. But if you go from shooting the person to jail, you miss all that. Yeah, you miss the people suffering. You miss the suffering that you caused. That's you did that. You do. Okay. And I also say that if people were trained more on guns. Like even to go to a gun range and be trained on it, you don't, wouldn't want to shoot the way that they're shooting so just, reckless just, out just here. Pull it out just, just pull it out and just You know, like if you're, if you're looking for someone, go to that someone. Mm. Like it's no way that kids and everything should be getting killed the way that mm. they are, especially if it's by accident. Like look at the two Lyft drivers. Like I was talking about, like you have Lyft drivers that's just trying to get money. And then they, one man was shot in both sides of his head on his right side and his left wow. side wow. because they're shooting wow. from across the street wow. at each other. Wow. And this man getting in the car, then another person getting in the car. They want the guy that's getting in the car and they shoot him too. Wow. So, I mean, it's just things that we're going through. So I do Think say, about it. Think be about a little it. kind, Think be a little it. bit more understanding with people have a little bit more patience with people because you know the world that we're living in is not a world that we've ever seen before and if you are the family or, or you're the victim of any kind of violence gun violence we want you to join the conversation as well uh, you can do that when we go live it's 877-226-0998 or you can inbox us we'll bring you into the debate the discussion um, we, we encourage uh, uh, the people who, who have uh, uh, some stake in the game, uh, be it you sell guns, maybe your, po your politician in the neighborhoods where you're getting the most crime, um, you're, you're a victim of these crimes, your mom, dad, son, daughter were, were victimized. Call up, be a part of this conversation because it's not all just funny games, Tosh. No, like, it's not. Like I know it's you not. want it to be. Like I want it to be. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, he's going to blame it all on me, but that's fine. This I'm, is what we're here for. This yeah. is the yin and the yang. <laughs> right. You know. And with that being said, we do have to address it because it is hitting families. Mm. And with that being said, everyone is affected by it. All you know, right. St. Louis is another big hotbed. One time for C Sharp, <clears throat> who is who is who is an advocate to stop the violence in St. Louis. So. All our St. Louis fans, Missouri, we want you guys to join the conversation every Tuesday, 8 to 10. It's the Tosh and Truth podcast, the Tosh and Truth show, right here exclusively on PCRadioLive.com. You stroke your ego to the Sub follow.
Tosh and Truth Podcast.